Okay guys, feel free to start when you're ready. Hi, my name is Brad Newberg. I'm with Dion Almer there on the camera. Hi Dion. Hey guys. Hey. We have uh, Chandra Patney here that's done some really interesting work integrating open social and gears with this happy hour project. If you want to introduce yourself and talk about that a bit. Yeah, my name is Chandra Patney. I work for IGN. I'm an engineer there. Um, and off late I have been assigned to do a project. Um, related to open social to develop a visit. So I figured that if we use Google Gears for implementing an open social container, that would significantly speed up the development time as well as testing time and, um, and so on. So I went to work to just do an open social implementation on top of Google Gears. Um, open social um, is a, it's the JavaScript part of the API that's using Google Gears right now. So what it lets you do, it lets you develop open social applications in, um, in serverless mode. Um, so that's, in, that's what in a nutshell it lets you do. The other things that it lets you do, at the same time it does provide a full functionality um, that some, something like an in-memory container would not provide where you can actually test the social aspect of the applications itself. where um, you can see your friends' data, you can see their activities and so on across two browser windows. And that's very helpful during the prototype work, development testing, as well as demonstration work when you are working on your projects. So it's, it's an agile way to develop open social applications. You don't need to start or stop a server. You don't even need a server. You can just right click your um, file into a Firefox or some browsers and it just works. And so, um, what about open social and Google Gears interest you? Uh, uh, Google Gears is, um, it, it really solves some very important problems. Um, namely, like uh, people uh, often overuse cookies as a storage mechanism, but then cookies in themselves provide a lot of, uh, create a lot of troubles because in part every HTTP request, um, the cookies have to shuttle back and forth. Mm -hmm. Even though something like an HTTP spec would require uh, up to 80 KB of data through cookies because it's 20 cookies, 4K cookie each per domain and per server, but then browser's model like Internet Explorer will crash if the cookie size itself is more than 4K. So you are always restricted by 4K. But not only that, then if you are using um, very large cookies, then every HTTP request you are shuttling back and forth those cookies. Mm -hmm. Now that's a huge problem, especially when you especially when you are shuttling those cookies upstream. You are basically taking the um, the upstream bandwidth, which is significantly lower on mm -hmm. the networks. So cookies are really a bad idea to store the data and to use those things. Google Gear does really solves that problem by providing an offline storage, and not only it provides offline storage, it provides a very superior model of data a relational model because it's completely backed up by SQLite database. And then you can use database tools such as you know SQLite Manager and there are commercial products. In fact, there's a Mozilla plugin which is, I find it very nice. Um, it in fact be works better than SQLite Manager or the free tool mm -hmm. in some cases, yeah. What's, in, what's that, what's that called? Um, it's a plugin for Mozilla. Mm -hmm. So w one thing that I find that if you have a, a text column in SQLite mm -hmm. and if it contains a lot of data then SQLite Manager, still it's in beta, so it's a, uh, and it will truncate it, but then you mm -hmm. can actually use the Firefox plugin, which um, completely lets you update the data and copy the data and so on, so. Yeah. And, and what about Open Social? What, what interests you there? Um, open Social is um, definitely, I mean, I think this year is the year of Open Social applications. Social networking has gone mainstream and they have really become larger than anything else. Um, you know, MySpace is an example of a um, you know, very um, big site which does a lot of traffic and have become you know, pretty much in headlines everywhere. Um, open social is, is, and there are many other sites like this, some are in the nature of their specific. So what open social lets you do is that it's an API that lets you um, develop applications that can run on any other, any container um, which would implement open social API like R code even MySpace. So what you end up doing is that you have end up writing an application in once and then that works across two social network sites. So um, Shindig, mm -hmm. which is a project, built a Java server side yeah. open social container. Yeah. Yeah. 
how do you see the relationship between happy hour, your work, and, uh, and that? Okay, there are some similarities there that they do provide both containers. Um, I have not um, uh, ran this in a container myself um, because still there's no binary available. And, um, but at the same time, um, the difference is that in order to use Syndic, you will still need to start a Java server and every time, um, and, and you need to have a client. Now, that's okay if you're a Java developer, you can be used to it, or, um, but then a lot of times you have your open social applications and the other developers, um, like the web engineers, web UI developers are doing the, the work there and it's difficult for them to you know, explain these kind of things and they would not be very comfortable. On the other hand, you can have a central server um, with some bootstrap um, data and so on, uh, but that also, again, you have to maintain something. While Google Gears type of approach, you just don't need server, so it's it's really nice and, and very easy to, um, to explain to people as well as, and also, of course, um, you know, you, you can always um, um, demonstrate this um, across uh, in your laptop or somewhere back. So, so it, it does solve those offline needs and which are not solved by the by this mm -hmm. container which is running as a server typically. So uh, what are your next steps for Happy Hour? Um, I just uh, finished the initial implementation of 0.6. Um, there are some still the bells and whistles are left so I'm going to do that and then um, there are um, right now the container itself it uh, it can host one widget at a time. The um, widget has to be hosted. Um, there can be more than one widget per page and so on, and those widgets has to be in iframes, and so there are those issues, so those work will, be, will go on. Yeah. So if anyone watching mm -hmm. wants to help you or contribute, where would they find Happy Hour? How uh, they just do Google on Happy Hour Open Social. Uh, it's, in, um, it's a project hosted on Google Code. You'll find it there. So something that's really unique about what you've done is uh, most people still see Gears as just being about offline. Yeah. But Gears is much more than that. It's this general way to give browsers new behavior. Yeah. And you were mentioning earlier that you, uh, that for example, cookies yeah. are a really inefficient way to pass data around yeah. because they can get so large. It's an anti-pattern actually. Yeah. But then that's what ten people tend to do, that they yeah. would use cookies as a storage mechanism. Yeah. Yeah. So you could use Gears to do storage to just get that information down once and then not have to push it around every single exactly. request. And that may have nothing to do with offline. No. I just wanted to highlight that, which is oh, unique. Yeah. I hadn't heard that before. Well, in fact, it's a unique problem if you look at it. Um, uh, there are any significant application would want to store some data on the client side. Yeah. It actually, if you look at uh, very large programs and the server side applications, that sometimes if you can store some data on the client, mm -hmm. that helps you um, builds stateless servers and stateless servers are good because they they scale up right so so it really solves a very critical problem of offline storage yeah uh, which is, which is actually in my view it's probably the next generation of browser will be you know benchmarked by that standard mm -hmm. that what kind of offline storage they have uh, mm -hmm. they're supporting yeah so Chandra, tell me about your experience working with gears um, yeah, when I started working in this, um, this is actually the first time I have worked, and um, and I'm being a Java developer. I don't even I'm, I, but at the same time, my interest in the languages have, you know, I, I have aware I've been aware of the the style of JavaScript programming, and so on. It has a different style of it because of itself. It, it does provide a far better abstraction than Java in many cases, like closures and and untyped variables and dynamic programming. You can in Java, you, know, you can if you you can't still reload a class if you add a method or a field. But in JavaScript, you can rip off methods, you can add fields and whatnot. So it's it's very dynamic language. Um, my experience with so I started working in Google. Um, uh, the API is uh, well stated, and uh, once I started working in it, actually I uh, I never had any much problem with that. I can just. Uh, I just included one file, and then after that, the API is available, and I, it's a typical uh, uh, sort of the standard idiom of really connecting to a database and then executing a query, mm -hmm. pass, passing bind parameters, and then iterating over the result set. So you were telling me um, when we were having lunch earlier that uh, you've done some really interesting work around uh, 
the date classes or the date format mm -hmm. inside of SQLite. Yeah. Inside of Gears. Yeah. You want to tell us a little what that is and yeah. what's going on there? Yeah, there, there seems to be a little disconnect in the Google API in order to date, date support. Mm -hmm. um, Java, uh, JavaScript has a date object, and that date object and JavaScript factory methods allow you to you know, write the dates in various format and um, um, Java and JavaScript both use millisecond in 1970 as a canonical format to store the date itself. Um, SQLite on the other hand internally um, stores date in different format mm -hmm. and um, with one method of at least if you uh, want to deal with the date at the millisecond level would be to use an ISO 8601 format. And there's no such method in JavaScript. Just, just really quick, everyone may not be familiar. Mm -hmm. What is that format? Um, ISO 8601. Uh, it's some format that which um, I think it's the um, it's the year, month, date, and then T letter, and gotcha. followed by um, some hour, minute, second, and then dot, and then um, then dot in the milliseconds. So that's what that. Mm -hmm. So 8601 format is in, in, in that shell. Um, so JavaScript API, the date API does not let you marshal the objects in that format, so every time you have to deal with this, you'll have to write this little boilerplate code which uh, shuttles date back, dates back and forth between SQLite and JavaScript. Mm -hmm. So it would be nice to have that when on the result set, um, if you are, um, or if you are passing the date objects um, back to the Google Gear API, it can detect the type of it and then um, do the proper serialization or provide an API to do that. So here's a question for you. Mm -hmm. um, so we talked about open source, we talked about Gears. Mm -hmm. um, what are two non-Google technologies that really excite you? Because there's lots of really interesting things happening yeah. out around the web. Yeah. And Google is just one part of that, one participant. Yeah. Um, what are some other things that you're finding really interesting? And yeah. you're touching on some of them. Yeah. Uh, I can talk about a couple of more Google stuff that I've, you know, we have been working on and we, we use for our development needs. On the non-Google side, we use Jetty as a, um, a container, Jetty container. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very, um, in Jetty 6, they have um, support for asynchronous requests and so on, and, and our Comet implementation, and they have been leading the charge of mm -hmm. um, Bayou protocol and so on. Jetty's great. Yeah, Jetty's great. and recently they, in fact, have posted a benchmark which says that they are, a Jetty can take 20,000 requests per second, yeah. so which is, um, which is very significant. So we have been using Jetty. It's a uh, it's an it's a JTwe container, um, just like SQLite, which is an embeddable database. It's an embeddable JTwe container, and we use it for all kinds of purpose. In fact, one of the things we use for Jetty is the standalone JNDI service. Mm -hmm. We don't use Jetty at all as a container. We just use the JNDI service for okay. running the applications that are written to work against JNDI data sources. But so then you just we look up through JNDI your exactly. data sources and then work with them. So we use them for standalone scripts yeah. and, um, and batch programs and those kind of things. It's nice yeah. that using JNDI. I got yeah. into that years yeah. ago. Not how many people use it. That's interesting. Yeah, I think it's it's one of the uh, um, sort of underrated uh, technology in Java. It's, yeah. it's it's very nice technology. Yeah. Um, and do you have one other? Thing? Yeah, the other things, uh, I would probably, uh, I've been really excited about the JSON as a technology itself, mm -hmm. and that's um, in the context of um, um, really XML not being the great data format, um, be, being a very verbose one. Uh, I think JSON is a really a middle ground there, and I would really like to see some languages and tools actually supporting JSON format um, natively. Um, like, you know, E4X? Yes, like J4X or something. Yeah. First class. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, there was actually a, there was a talk in, I think, um, some um, given by um, Mark Reynolds sometime back that there was a talk about supporting um, native XML in the, in the Java platform. Uh, I think people, um, the language designers in that respect, has to look at a bigger picture yeah. here that it's not only, um, like even in JavaScript, um, even Google Gears code would be a lot easier to write if I can not only write um, XML there in, in, in its native format, but I can write actually verbatim strings. Um, so if you, I mean, it's such a uh, elementary feature to add in a language. I think like C sharp has a verbatim string. So if you have verbatim strings, then you can allow things to, you know, you can write SQL code there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, that go like JavaScript does support actually in a way uh, regular expressions follow a special syntax just because of that. It's really so, nice. Yeah. So that solves this problem. But the bigger sort of problem is to 
the, the abstraction over that would be to recognize that there are these um, things that needs to be supported by beta. Um, and probably, you know, the language is to allow some extension mechanisms to really implement these sort of things like you could write native SQL, you could write native XML, you could write native regular expressions, um, those kind of things. That's how it is. Yeah. Um, so um, I, I really, uh, I hope that the, we, I've been um, working on some tools and whatnot, which um, let's um, just deal with the JSON format. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just to end, mm -hmm. tell us one thing about yourself that most people don't know or some fun, some fun thing. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm put you on the spot or anything. No, that's yeah. fine. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm one of those guys who uh, carry like Java language specification in their pocket. Nice. Uh, I I deeply care about. Um, I'm primarily a Java developer, mm -hmm. and I deeply care about the language and the specification. And it's really one of the very nice uh, community and nice language in terms of it's the way it's evolved and it has been around and it serves the purpose. So, mm -hmm. yeah. well, thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Barbara Walters, and I'm here with Chandra.